Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today it's time to peer into the deep darkness of a certain Marshall D. Teach, and more specifically, the idea of him eventually attaining a third devil fruit, being the greedy, greedy man he is. Now this idea isn't exactly new, and it's been floating around quite prominently ever since the end of the Paramount War, when Blackbeard achieved what we all thought was impossible by acquiring a second devil fruit. And we're not so much here to talk about how or why that might be possible, because it's still quite unclear, but having done the impossible once, thoughts of course, immediately turned to, so what would happen if he did it again? And what's to stop him doing it again? In fact, has doing it again been foreshadowed all along by the great and powerful Oda? And the answer is a resounding, undeniable maybe. Marshall D. Teach is an aberration of One Piece because as we know, thanks to Marco, Teach is not normal. Specifically, his body is quote, odd. Something that may very well have been picked up on as early as the days of the Gyrock, when Luffy and Zoro correct Nami by stating that Blackbeard isn't just one guy. Guy. Not that there's anything wrong with being just one guy, because that alone gives you the power to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. So you show that Blackbeard who's boss, join the Grand Fleet, and say hi in the comments if you're a new recruit. Welcome. But back to One Piece things. These lines from Luffy and Zoro could be a simple reference to picking up on the rest of the Blackbeard pirates scattered throughout Mocktown, but it does add another of many, many question marks to the Blackbeard enigma. And the biggest one also comes from the Gyrock, where we we are introduced to the Jolly Roger of the Blackbeard Pirates, a seemingly simple and innocuous existence, very piratey, no bells and whistles. I mean, it certainly isn't, say, the Jolly Roger of the Fire Tank Pirates, but then again, at least we know what that Jolly Roger is referring to. It presents Capone Gang Beige as a mafia boss and hints at his ability to become a literal castle man. Similarly, the Jolly Roger of the Straw Hat Pirates is a direct reference to their captain. And you know what? Even the Jolly Roger of the Tontada Pirates holds deep meaning because it's small and disappointing, a perfect representation representation of the Tontada tribe themselves. But what exactly does this mean? Three bland skulls and matching crossbones. None of the skulls even have missing teeth like Teach himself, which I feel is a, is a bit of a missed opportunity. But the greater point is that prominent pirates in One Piece do not get assigned arbitrary Jolly Rogers. It could be a really simple reference like the red hair pirate showing Shanks' scar and tendency to use swords, or even the Roger pirates where it's just putting like a double Roger mustache on a classic skull and crossbones, but there is meaning in both of those cases, which really gives us little to no choice, but to except that this triple skull is an important reference to something. Whether that be split personality, some sort of Siamese triplets, or even if Blackbeard turns out to be three smaller men in a coat. Whatever the case, there is something quite profound about the number three when it comes to this man. Nay, when it comes to this men. Although I suppose one of the Blackbeards could always be a woman. And you'll find many, many references to the number three with Blackbeard. Take this spread, for example. One of the most iconic scenes in all of One Piece. And notice how Blackbeard is directly paralleled on the other side of the page by three members of the Straw Hat Pirates. Isn't it quite something that the figure of Blackbeard needs to be balanced out by three figures? But what's more shocking is that when we turn our attention back to Blackbeard, there are also three Blackbeards, which is very, very strange indeed. But the hidden meaning behind the Jolly Roger of the Blackbeard Pirates is the primary piece of evidence that has led to the common belief that Blackbeard will acquire a third Devil Fruit. Because the number three doesn't just hold great significance to him, but also the world of Devil Fruits, given that they are divided into three broad classifications. And as such, it would be almost most annoyingly perfect for Blackbeard to end up with three Devil Fruit abilities by the time he does come into focus as the main antagonist of the series. In fact, in the past, there was even a pretty fun idea that he was already the user of a Zoan fruit as well because of the scar on Shanks's face, which was allegedly delivered by Mr. Blackbeard. So naturally, people speculated that he was some kind of vicious Zoan user with claws like a lion or something, but this wound was more or less later confirmed to be delivered by a weapon. A weapon with three blades, mind you. Hmm, there's that number again. But while this theory did not turn turn out to be the case, I still think we're on the right track thinking Zoan, because Blackbeard already holds the power of the Ami Ami no Mi, a Logia type, as well as the Gura Gura no Mi, a Paramecia type. So it's only natural to assume that a Zoan would come next, and I swear, if this whole three Devil Fruits idea does turn out to be real, and the third fruit is not a Zoan, then that would probably be one of the greatest missed opportunities in all of storytelling. But with that relatively straightforward path of logics, this leads us to ponder as to what Zoan fruit Blackbeard is either actively searching for or waiting patiently to acquire. Because that's another thing that's probably hugely relevant to this discussion, the Blackbeard pirates are actively collecting devil fruits, mostly by hunting down fruit users, killing them, and using their knowledge of fruit science to capture the power, assumedly within a sack of pre-prepared fruit. And while that doesn't give us many clues as to what fruit Blackbeard 
may be seeking himself, I do think it's important to throw that link out there because there is no other faction in this world that is so focused on Devil Fruits and even fewer factions that seem to have the sheer knowledge that Blackbeard possesses. But focusing in on the Zoan class, it would be pretty hard to look past a mythical Zoan, right? Because Blackbeard's two current fruits each possess an element of prestige, with the Gura Gura no Mi being labeled as the strongest in the Paramecia class, whilst the Ami Ami no Mi is said to be the most dangerous power recorded in all of Devil Fruit history, according to the Viz manga translation anyway, which is what we go by. In any case, both of which are quite impressive, so the Zoan fruit should be something along the same lines. Like, I highly doubt that Blackbeard is just waiting for the perfect opportunity to take the Inu Inu no Mi model Dachshund, for example, although. But quite frankly, the Zoan class makes this a much easier discussion because there is a clear hierarchy within this classification. You have standard Zoans, then carnivorous, then ancient, and finally mythical sitting cleanly at the top, unless of course there is a level above that, which, hmm. But according to the One Piece wiki, we have roughly this many mythical Zoan users introduced to us in the series thus far, except don't count these three because they're not canon. And also maybe don't count Kaido for now, because in a really bizarre situation, we still don't know the name of his devil fruit. And we're all just kind of assuming that the dragon is the fruit form rather than Kaido being some sort of ogre fruit user. To be fair, it's a pretty safe assumption, which is why we're going to talk about it first. If we were to look at all of the currently known or speculated mythical devil fruits, Kaido's would be a natural choice. In dragon form, he has displayed power absolutely out of this world. And the fruit being held by a current emperor of the sea is a pretty good reason for Blackbeard not to have acquired it as of yet. It's a reasonable thought process. However, I do find it a bit hard to get behind, mostly because I can't see us spending an entire mega arc, in fact, an entire saga, featuring this dragon user as the main antagonist, just so we can spend the very next final saga of the series facing off against the exact same power just held by a different person. I mean, it's definitely possible, but aesthetically, I think we're going to be a bit drained of dragon by then. Although I have to admit the idea of Kaido's dragon form with Blackbeard's face, missing teeth and everything is pretty hilarious. Let's move on though, because there are other options, one of which might be Marco's Tori Tori no Mi model Phoenix. And this is one I quite like the idea of because it provides something that Blackbeard doesn't already have, which is the general art of healing. You know, the Gura Gura no Mi gives him apocalyptic levels of destruction, whilst the Ami Ami no Mi provides him with a hard nullification counter to other devil fruits, but its use does cause heavy amounts of damage. Damage that, you know, would be nice to be immediately healed by certain Phoenix powers. That feels like a nice and potentially even invincible trifecta of abilities because right now the only opening Blackbeard has is that he is susceptible to being damaged even by lower ranked combatants. So take that vulnerability away and he may very well be able to make good on his very bold claim that he is the strongest in the world, which he said on Panara Island and at the time it was a lie. The only problem here is why doesn't he have this fruit already? If this was the power he was looking for, then why not acquire it during the payback war? I mean, maybe I could accept the idea that Marco fled before Teach and the Blackbeard pirates had a chance to kill him. It's just clunky though. It's clunky all around because Blackbeard would have had so many chances to take this fruit power because he and Marco were also crewmates for decades. He was at the Paramount War and so on and so forth. So as nicely as the fruit may fit, Blackbeard just doesn't seem to be too interested in it. Another one that might be interesting though would be Sengoku's Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu, AKA Big Old Buddha. I'll be honest though, I mostly consider it because I think the aesthetics would make for a pretty intimidating final opponent, a giant golden Blackbeard. But then again, its shockwave ability is probably just a bit too similar to the powers of the Gura Gura no Mi, making it perhaps redundant. Although I don't know, it might contrast well with the Yami Yami no Mi, pure darkness entwined with peak enlightenment. Plus being able to take it from a former fleet admiral sounds like a bit of a rough task. Look, I don't know though, it just doesn't really seem to fit for me. And we could also look at Katarina Devon's Devil Fruit, which it obviously isn't, because if it was Blackbeard's target, then well, it probably wouldn't currently be being used by Devon. And guess where that leaves us? That leaves us with Orochi. That's right, he is a mythical Devil Fruit user, which I often actively try to forget because he is the most disappointing of the bunch, but there is something to be said about the Hebi Hebi no Mi model Yamata no Orochi, which is far too long a name. Mostly because it's a mythical Devil Fruit that we currently have untapped potential of. So you could carry it over into a new arc with a more fearsome user. And if you wanted to be super tinfoil hat, then you could say that the eight heads granted by this fruit add up perfectly to equal the eight crossbones in the Blackbeard Pirates Jolly Roger. I personally am not willing to go quite that far though. I like the number three, I like it a lot, and I know that numbers in general do have great meaning in One Piece, but that one is uh, it's a big stretch. With that said, this might be a great way to get Blackbeard involved on Wano somehow, now holding a key interest in it, but I also can't help but be disappointed well in advance if this did turn out to be the fruit that we were looking for, which is why my personal hope is that this fruit will be one that we have not seen in action as of yet. Perhaps a fruit that is unknown to the world at large, hidden or locked 
tucked away somewhere on this truly massive planet. And an example of this idea would be, say, a Kerberos fruit, or Cerberus, whichever you prefer to say, both correct. I prefer Kerberos because it's just more fun to say. But yeah, just look at this thing. Three heads and everything, perfect for numbering. And I could also see Blackbeard turning into a giant pupper. There's also a nice dark link to hell involved there, further solidifying Blackbeard as something quite scary. And I should also say there's nothing to state that Blackbeard doesn't already have this fruit that we're speculating over here today. Just because the Shanks theory didn't pan out in the past doesn't mean the Blackbeard hasn't long since acquired it and is just keeping it under wraps. Although I find it pretty difficult to buy that just because, you know, he's the epitome of a showboat and surely it would be common knowledge by now, but I guess the chance does exist. It's also a good idea to bear in mind that Blackbeard may not necessarily be looking for the most powerful Zoan fruit. I really think it needs to be something more suited to complement his existing abilities, which already provides him with enough power to quite literally destroy the world. So adding more power on top of that seems very redundant. And at the end of the day, I should also say there's no guarantee that he will have a third devil fruit and perhaps we're all just reading far, far too much into this triple skull thing. I mean, it could have any number of other meanings that we're just not aware of yet. Like, I don't know, maybe one skull represents Blackbeard, one skull represents a Beck, and one is the grand foe of Joy Boy from the Void Century. And it's all just about inherited will like the rest of One Piece. And I literally just made that up, it's not in the script. But that's an example of just how easy it can be to derive meaning from literally anything. With that said, I still really want Blackbeard to have the devil fruit and I support the idea wholeheartedly. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.